Hi, my name is Stevie McLaughlin and I like to write songs. Today we're going to continue writing our prog rock song. If you'd like to see the series from the start, click on the YouTube card. So today we're going to try and write a chorus for the song. We finished off the last time with a musical interlude after the first verse. And I really hear a heavy part coming in now, so I'm going to program some heavy drums with double kicks. I think that's the drums recorded for the chorus. I've got an idea about how the chorus is going to go. I think the bass guitar and the rhythm guitars are going to just drill along at the same time as the double kick and make it really heavy, but using the same chords as the verses. So for this section I think I'll go back to my main rhythm guitar sound that I always use on tracks. It's my sort of Metallica inspired rhythm guitar tone and it's a rev generator with an ML Sound Labs IR. Alright, so that's the bass and guitars recorded. I think because it uses the same chord sequence, we could maybe continue using the same keyboard patches on it. That might add some detail. Let me see. We'll just check it anyway. Yeah, okay. I like those wee um, notes that sometimes poke out. Sounds cool. Let's see if we can get some lyrics for this. I knew when I started writing this song that I wanted to cover some of the cultural significance of the number 12 in our history and literature. So I did a bit of brainstorming and came up with a few different things. Some things are about the 12 Monkeys concept that the song is about, and some are not necessarily related to 12 Monkeys, but about the number 12. At the start, we go 12 in a row, 12 in their place, 12 in a circle, 
like numbers on a face. So the first three lines are straight from the 12 monkeys concept. And the last one, like numbers on a face, are the 12 numbers on a clock face. Scratched upon a wall, 12 in a cage. 12 in a cage refers to the 12 monkeys that were being used for scientific experimentation in the labs. One for every hour, back to the clock face, like colors on a page, just a rhyme. And then I thought about 12 as the number of jurors in a court system. So we get 12 sent to judge, 12 at the table, all to find me guilty, 12 who conspire. And 12 who conspire led me to start thinking about the 12 disciples of Jesus, one who must betray me, three times you deny me, and then the 12 tribes of Israel, 12 tribes to follow, and then 12 tongues of fire, which is from the Bible again when the Holy Ghost came down. I like using religious iconography in my songs, even though I'm not a particularly religious person myself, but we can't get away from the significance of things like Shakespeare and the Bible in our culture. And because there was so many things for me to cover, I decided that I would write different lyrics for the second chorus. So we have two different sets of lyrics. So when we hear the second chorus, it's going to be different lyrics. I always like to put some kind of difference in every repetition in a song because it's so easy to copy and paste things nowadays. It's nice to hear uh, subtle differences in the different repetitions. So when it came to writing the second verse, I had a very straightforward idea to just look at the first verse and copy the phrasing of the first verse. So in the first verse we had, I've been waiting, I've been waiting for you. And I changed that to, I've been searching, I've been seeking the truth. And then that led on to the line, I know you won't believe me. And then we had feeling better, feeling better now, which I changed to, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter now, in time you'll come to know. And then we had the line, there's no voices, I can't hear them, which I changed to, there's no choices, it's all fiction, it's just a reassuring illusion. And then in the final phrase, we had there's no dark clouds, just clear skies, which I changed to, there's no reason to be fearful. Swimming in imagination, sit back, relax, enjoy the show. So I thought, sit back, relax, enjoy the show, led well back into the heavy chorus. So probably my favorite line in the song so far is the music of chance, we dance along. I like the way chance and dance rhyme, but not at the end of the phrase, the way you would normally expect. And it sort of has a sense in it that things happen and they're beyond our control. We believe that we are masters of our own destiny. But in some ways, we're just here to enjoy the ride.
Okay, so arrangement-wise now, I'm in a bit of a dilemma. We have this musical segue, which leads into the first chorus. But then, on the second chorus, I thought it sounded good just going straight into the chorus without the musical segue. But when we finish the chorus each time, I don't feel that it sounds right to go back into the verses. I think we need a guitar rough. I think we need some some music, some kind of bridge that'll lead back into the verses again. So I'm going to play about a bit with the guitar and see if I can come up with anything that feels right for this section. Right, so what about something like this? With the heavy drums again. Um, let me see. Oh, actually, we could try doing the Metallica trick of truncating part of the bar. Yeah, that's cool. We'll try that. Right, let's see what we have now. Okay, we need to do something with those drums. Okay, so I think I hear like maybe a half time rough coming in now. Da, 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 da. Let's see if I can come up with something for that. What have we got now? End of the chorus.
I like that truncated rough. It's very Metallica-esque. Okay, let's see if we can actually get the two sections of the song to match up now. So in these heavier sections now, we've come a long way from where we started as a sort of Stephen Wilson pastiche, but I think that's kind of the point. One of my most difficult challenges every time I try to write a song is going out to face the blank page. So when I open up an empty Reaper session and say I will write a song, it's the trick that I have to do to myself to try and actually put some notes into Reaper, you know? So we started off listening to Stephen Wilson and thinking about how to do a song. Now I've ended up with something that's completely different from maybe something you would have heard Stephen Wilson from doing, but that's okay, that's cool. It, it actually was the catalyst that got us started on this journey, and that's the point that I'm trying to make. I was listening to the chorus and I kind of thought the vocal sounded a bit clean. Let's listen. I wanted to do a wee bit of experimentation with distortion. So I tried this effect here. Let's hear this and see if we think it's better. There's lots of other distortion effects I could try and I'll probably go through them all before when I'm doing the final mix down. As a placeholder, this sounds quite good. A bit of a Deftones kind of vibe to it. So let's listen to everything that we did today leading out of the final section of music that we did in the last video. Let's put some echo on the voice at that last sustained note. This section probably could be doing with some more work. But I like that little turn around on the hi-hats. It's cool.
get that right. Probably won't go into that rough second time round. Okay, so I feel that that was a productive day's work and I'm really excited about the song. In the next video, let's add some guitar solos and stuff like that. So if you've been watching the video so far, then thank you so much. I really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you in the next one. You rock!